Hi, my name's Ian Sagan. I'm a pre-sales engineer for Marvel. And today I'd like to talk to you on how to enable storage or floats on vSphere 7.0. We're using a Dell PowerEdge R740 running VMware vSphere 7.0 and we have our RNDC network adapter, converger network adapter with four ports, two 10 gigabit SFP plus ports, plus two one gig ports. And we'll be concentrating on the two 10 gigabit SFP ports and enabling storage offloads on those. With the PowerEdge, we've upgraded the Dell and iDRAC BIOS um, all up to the latest versions using the Dell DUP image and as it's always advisable to use the latest firmware drivers uh, right across your systems to um, have full functionality. What we'll be doing is on the two 10 gigabit ports VM NIC 0 and VM NIC 1 on VM NIC 0 we'll be enabling the iSCSI hardware offload and on VM NIC 1 which is on port 2 of the 10 gig adapter, will be enabling the fiber channel over Ethernet hardware offload. Looking inside the Dell server from lifecycle controller device settings, we can see we have a Dell storage controller, and then we also have a dual port 25 gigabit QLogic converged network adapter, and also a QLogic. 32 gigabit fiber channel dual port adapter. But what we'll be concentrating on today is the integrated RNDC quad port converge network adapter with two 10 gigabit network ports and also two one gigabit sort of management network ports. So looking inside for the storage controllers, we can see a PCIe SATA controller on there and also a Marvel QLogic 32 gig fiber channel adapter. What we're going to do is also add an iSCSI HPA and also an FCOE HPA. So we've downloaded the latest VMware drivers onto the site. So we've gone to the VMware website, search for QL41262. This is a package which will provide the drivers for all the either 4500 or 4100 Fastlink Ethernet adapters. And this includes the iSCSI, FCOE and Ethernet drivers for the adapter. And it's one package. Basically you install that on the server. So once we've downloaded the driver, we install it on the host and it installs four components. There's the QEDENTV, which is the L2 Ethernet driver, which is always there in box as standard. And then we also install the FCOE QEDF driver and then the iSCSI offload driver QEDI. And then we also have the RDMA driver, which is QEDRNTV, uh, but we'll talk about RDMA on a following video. So when we reboot the server, we interrupt the boot process and we go into the Dell lifecycle controller. From system setup, we can go into the advanced hardware configuration. And then we click on device settings. And then we can configure our RNDC. Uh, so we pick on port one on here. And then we can drill down and go into the device level configuration for the adapter. And then you get a choice of enabling virtualization mode. And what we'll do is we'll enable network partitioning or MPAR as it's called for short. And then once you go into, once you've enabled MPAR, you have an option of enabling MPAR EP mode, extended partition mode, or not. With extended partition mode, you can have up to 16 per partitions per adapter. So that would be four partitions on a quad port adapter for port one and port two, the 10 gig adapter ports, but the one gig adapter ports, uh, we don't enable MPAR on them as, as on the note below. 
uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just enable MPAR without EP mode. So this just enables two partitions. One of those will be running Ethernet, and then on port one will be running iSCSI, and then on port two will be running FCOE. We'll keep it simple. So now we've enabled NIC partition, it becomes an additional NIC partition configuration option on here. And now we'll go into that and then basically you can see that we've got two partitions. Partition one, which is enabled as default and partition two, which is disabled as default. And now we'll go into partition one and then we can just check um, Ethernet enabled along with RDMA Rocky, uh, both iWarp and Rocky. And then we've also um, older configuration and MAC addresses available on there. So we'll go into partition two, which has disabled um, the Ethernet side. And what we do is we go and click on iSCSI mode enabled. And you get a choice here. We can either enable iSCSI or FCOE, but only one or the other. Um, basically, on port one, we're enabling iSCSI. Um, and then FCOE is disabled along with the Ethernet sides disabled. And now we've enabled iSCSI, we've got an additional tab on here and it says iSCSI configuration. So I'll just go into here. You can configure the general parameters, iSCSI boot and um, also iSCSI target. Uh, but, but if you want more information, please look in the user guide. So if you look at global bandwidth, you can configure each partition on how much bandwidth each one has, but it's best to leave it at default. Basically this way, both partitions will share all 10 gigabit bandwidth uh, between the two ports um, and get the best utilization out of them. So it's simpler and easier just to keep them at, at the default configuration. So now we look at partition two, port two, partition two we've gone into. Um, and on here, what we're going to do is enable fiber channel over Ethernet mode on partition two, port two, and then iSCSI is disabled. And then we get a new, this configures a, a fiber channel, a FCOE WWN, and you, you, we also can go into the FCOE configuration. Once we've enabled all the settings, basically you want to save the settings, do yes, um, and then we can reboot it. And then once we've done that, you can then boot up into VMware. Again, we'll still see all the network partitions, but we also see there's a new one, VMNIC 128. So it, it's it created this for the FCOE. And then we can also go down and look at our storage adapters and then we can see that we've got a, a new QLogic FCOE fiber channel adapter, VMHBA7, which is fiber channel online, and that's a FCOE driver. And then we've also got our iSCSI HBA here at the bottom, VMHBA64. And again, there's our iSCSI unique identifier. So that's how you can enable both iSCSI and FCOE hardware offload. Thank you. Hopefully this gives you a good understanding of how simple it is to enable both iSCSI and FCOE hardware offload on Marvell Fastlink Ethernet adapters. Thank you for your time and goodbye. Mm -hmm.